In the previous class, we saw an interesting simulation in which uh, when we change the operating point with an AVR uh, in action, you found that uh, there was a increase or rather the system did not stabilize uh, at the new equilibrium point. You found that in fact, the oscillations were increasing. Okay? The, in fact, the oscillations or the swings you can say were increasing with time. Now, uh, before we proceed uh, forward with this, may I just tell you that uh, this kind of thing is actually observed in practice. In fact, uh, there have been situations in which uh, the grid operators have noticed that uh, seemingly spontaneously, uh, when the operating point uh, or rather when the operating point uh, shifts, I mean this of course, is not uh, you know tracked by an operator for every small change. I mean for example, the load somewhere in the system could change and your operating point changes. Okay. Uh, in, the, in such a case, it has been observed in certain circumstances that the system does not seem to settle down to the new equilibrium point. Okay. So, uh, we in the previous class, we actually shifted over from doing the simulation to trying to, uh, trying to understand this uh, using eigenvalue analysis. Now, of course, the system behavior uh, essentially is non-linear as a result of which if we want to analyze this using the uh, linearized theory that is uh, eigenvalue analysis, we would need to linearize the differential equations and in order to do that we will have to actually uh, first of all find an equilibrium point because when I say linearization I am basically uh, trying to characterize the system, in, uh, the system for small disturbances around an equilibrium point. Uh, so, your system in fact, uh, the linearized system is actually dependent on the operating point. Okay. Now, uh, this also means that uh, when I change the operating point, the system eigenvalues change. Okay. So, it is probably not very surprising that your system behavior does change with change in operating point, but it still would be nice to, to really analyze this particular system by linearized analysis and really try to predict using eigen analysis that indeed certain operating points are unstable. Now, uh, the starting point for uh, the simulation was uh, we just synchronized the machine and then thereafter we gave uh, certain disturbances like step changes in torque or the voltage regulator uh, reference. Uh, so, we actually uh, went to different operating points or we tried to go to different operating points by essentially changing the inputs to the differential equations. Okay. So, the inputs of course, being the mechanical torque and the voltage reference, okay. but uh, for Eigen analysis what we will assume uh, or what we need to do is we have to first find out the equilibrium conditions corresponding to an operating point itself, then linearize the system differential equations and once you do that you carry out the Eigen value analysis on the resulting state matrix the linear system of the linear system. Okay. So, the first step in fact is uh, uh, trying to linearize the system or uh, to do that of course, we need to uh, compute the operating point. Okay. The first step in operating point computation is in fact, doing a load flow, a load flow or a steady state analysis of the system. In fact, the load flow computes the steady state value of variables in the electrical network, okay. but what we need to also take out the initial or the equilibrium values of the states. Okay. The states of the system uh, in fact, are uh, the fluxes of the synchronous machine, the currents uh, well the currents are algebraically related to the fluxes. Uh, you also have a state corresponding to the excitation system. Okay. So, you, uh, you have to effectively compute the equilibrium values of all these states, use those equilibrium values in your computation of the linearized system. Remember linearization involves computing the uh, you know uh, or rather uh, computing the partial derivatives of the nonlinear terms and evaluating them at the uh, equilibrium point. So, equilibrium point computation is the first step. In fact, it is the first step of even simulations. Okay. Uh, of course, our simulation started off with synchronization. So, luckily we were uh, uh, the computation was very simple in the sense the currents were 0 and back calculating all the states was very simple, but when you have got a synchronous machine already connected to an uh, 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 say an infinite bus through a transmission line of reactants x. Uh, we have to specify what operate uh, at least the broad uh, operating uh, conditions which exist or the load flow solution and then back calculate uh, in a systematic manner 
the the actual uh, uh, equilibrium values of the states corresponding to this uh, operating condition. Putting it in another way, we have specified for example, what the terminal uh, conditions of the machine are like this it is giving out this much power okay, the electrical power. It is also uh, you know uh, having a terminal voltage of say 1 per unit. Okay. So, this is like a specification which you are giving which describes the operating condition. Okay. From that we actually need to compute what this value of the rotor angle say delta is, what is the value of the other fluxes are and so on which corresponding uh, correspond to steady state corresponding to this operating point. Okay. So, today's lecture uh, we will uh, continue our linearized analysis. In fact, in the previous class uh, we took quite a bit of uh, time to actually uh, obtain uh, the steps towards getting the equilibrium uh, values of the various states. Okay. Now, uh, it is a bit it was a bit tedious I uh, admit. So, what we will do is do a quick recap uh, using slides. So, that uh, I hope whatever you did not or uh, found difficult to understand there will become uh, immediately clear here. Okay. So, our uh, next stay, step is to just I will just outline the steps required to do the eigenvalue analysis. Okay. The first step is get the equilibrium condition. So, first thing I will uh, specify what are the things which are specified? You have got uh, a synchronous machine uh, which is connected to an infinite bus the infinite bus voltage magnitude and angle is specified. Okay. The reactance of the line is specified, we are assuming that the generator power output power p is specified as well as we have also specified the voltage magnitude. Okay. From these operating conditions and the parameters of the machine compute first the equilibrium conditions of the system. Remember that the synchronous generator itself uh, is uh, uh, has got a voltage regulator whose form we have discussed in the previous class. Okay. So, let us quickly uh, go through the steps uh, involved in linearized analysis. Uh, we had initially uh, planned to of course, uh, model I will give you uh, I thought I would give you the models of all the various components of a power system and then move on to analysis, but I think uh, this is a better idea. Let us do our analysis side by side with the modeling. Okay. So, today we will do the linearized analysis of uh, the automatic voltage regulated uh, uh, simple power system. Okay. Now, so let us uh, pay attention to the, to the slides which I am showing to you now. Okay. So, the first step in uh, computing the linearized uh, rather the equilibrium conditions is first point is the infinite bus voltage is given that is uh, it is E angle 0, which effectively means that E a n, E b n and E c n are these. Okay. This is what I mean when I say uh, the infinite bus voltage is E angle 0. Okay. What is specified as I mentioned some time back is that the real power output and the voltage magnitude is specified p and v. This transmission line reactance is also specified. The phase angle of the generator terminal voltage theta is computed by the formula sin inverse p x by v e. Note that in this context theta is the phase angle of the terminal voltage. Uh, it is of course, a constant in steady state. The reason why I bring this to your notice is uh, in another context we have used theta as the rotor position. Okay. So, we will not uh, define a new variable here, we will just continue with uh, what we have done, but uh, you should keep in mind that theta is the terminal voltage uh, phase angle and not the rotor position uh, which was used in another context. Okay. So, uh, to avoid notational confusion I am uh, clarifying this point. We assume that the transmission line has been modeled by a toy model, it is just a reactor effectively of x, it does not have any resistance. So, the using the formula for power flow, you know uh, uh, the power three phase power flow is V into E, the line to line voltage RMS magnitudes of both ends divided by x okay, uh, into sin of theta, theta minus 0, the angle of the infinite bus is of course, 0. So, that is how we get the expression for theta, this has to be calculated from uh, the values of p, x, v and e which are specified. Okay. So, theta is uh, is obtained. What does it mean? It means that if I get theta, it means v a n, v b n and v c n are as shown. Okay. So, theta appears in this 
the sinusoidal terms corresponding to the voltage A to neutral, B to neutral and C to neutral. Okay? So, we are assuming here of course, a star connected system. Okay? We are not considering any unbalance that is one point which you should recall. Okay? So, this is what I mean by V angle theta. Okay? So, theta is also obtained because we know the power specification. The next step is of course, uh, getting current. Suppose current uh, is I angle phi, which also means I A is root 2 by 3 I sin omega not t plus phi. So, if I say current is I angle phi, this is what I mean are the line currents. Okay? So, this is what I mean. Okay? So, what is the value of I in such a case, if I A is related to I in this fashion, okay? then I and phi capital I and phi are given by simply this, the magnitude of V angle theta minus E angle 0 divided by J x. Okay? So, I capital I is equal to V angle theta minus E angle 0 by J x okay? and the phase angle is of course, the phase angle of this quantity itself. So, the phase angle of V angle theta minus E angle 0 by J x is the phase angle of the current. So, once you have got theta, you can also get I and phi and therefore, you can get I A, I B and I C. Okay? the instantaneous value. So, if you start off with the instantaneous values of the infinite bus uh, and if you are given p, x and v, you can get i and phi okay? and therefore, get i a, i b, i c as per this formula. Okay? So, once you do that, remember that the infinite bus voltage e a n, e b n and e c n, if it transform to Parkes reference frame, we have done this before for uh, uh, this uh, three phase voltage source, you will get E d and E q, the d q components of the infinite bus voltages as E sin delta minus of E sin delta and E cos delta. Similarly, you can show that V d and V q given that V a, V a n, V b n and V c n are the form uh, which I had shown you about a couple of slides or three or four slides back. Similarly, I d and I q are given by these formulae. Okay? So, this is what you get uh, in case you uh, do the d q transformation of the voltages. Okay? Now, what do you have? You have got theta, you have got v, you have got e, you have got i. Okay? So, you have got these values by just back calculating as I uh, mentioned some time back. But of course, you do not have delta, we still do not have delta, this is something you need to compute. Okay? So, in fact, I cannot get E d, E q, V d, V q, I d and I q the equilibrium values yet till I tell you what delta is. Okay? But remember, if you look just by observing E d and E q, the form of E d and the form of E q, you can show that you can compactly write this in this fashion. right? So, for example, E q plus J E d into E raise to J delta is equal to E angle 0 that is E plus J 0. Okay? Similarly, V q plus J V d into E raise to J delta is V angle theta which is nothing but V cos omega uh, cos theta plus J V sin theta. Okay? Similarly, for I and phi and I q and I d. Okay? So, what we know is not E d and E q, but we do know what E q plus J E d into E raise to J delta is. Okay? Similarly, we know we know what I q plus J i d into E raise to J delta is. Okay? So, the next step of course, um, uh, is trying to find delta itself, okay? because from that we can get all the d q components of the voltages. Okay? Now, one of the things which we derived in the previous class was that if R a is neglected, and if we assume that the infinite bus frequency is uh, omega naught, which is equal to the base frequency, then in steady state we have E f d plus x d minus x q into i d e raise to j delta is equal to v q plus j v d into e raise to j delta plus j x q into i q plus j i d into e raise to j delta. So, this is something we did in the previous class. Uh, I have just read it out, but uh, if you you would uh, probably some of you would care to look at what we did sometime around the end of the previous lecture. Okay? So, what uh, the interesting point here is of course, the, the E f d 
E f d plus x d minus x q into i d into e raise to j delta is equal to finally, something what we know. Okay. So, that is uh, v angle theta plus j x q into i angle phi. So, that is something we know. So, in fact, uh, we know the right hand side of this equation. Okay. We know what v angle theta plus j x q into i angle phi is, because we know x q, we know i, we know v and we know theta and phi. Okay. So, the, the point here is that because of this, we can compute what the value of delta is going to be. Okay. So, once uh, effectively what I mean to say is, if you look at the previous slide, we know v angle theta plus j x q into i angle phi. So, because of that, we know E f d plus x d minus x q into i d into e raise to j phi. What do I mean? Uh, maybe I will make it clear here. So, if E f d plus x d minus x q into i d into a raise to j delta is a known complex number. Okay. So, suppose it is a plus j b. Okay. This is just uh, you know, suppose it is this. Okay. What it means is, since this is a real number, since this is a real number, what it means is delta is nothing, but the angle of a plus j b or you can say the tan inverse b by a. Okay. So, that is what I mean by angle of the complex number and because of that, it also follows that the magnitude of this is a real number is nothing but the magnitude a plus j b. Okay. This we know. So, therefore, we can get the value of this. Okay. So, this is what uh, we the, this is where we were last time in fact. Uh, once you get delta a lot of things suddenly you know become known. Okay. For example, once you get delta uh, one can get since you know i angle phi you can get i d and i q. Okay. Similarly, you can get v d and v q and e d and e q. Okay. Moreover, since you know now i d and you know of course, x d and x q, you can actually get E f d. Okay. So, you can get the equilibrium value of E f d, which results, which results in the operating condition you are trying to describe. Okay. From E f d of course, you can obtain V ref. Now, one interesting point which you should note, which we mentioned last time too, is that since we have got a proportional controller in our we have modeled the AVR with a proportional controller this is E f d and of course, there are limits. Okay. Now, we will of course, assume that uh, the operating point is such that we have not exceeded any limit. In that case E f d okay, is equal to x c and uh, in steady state this will be x c by k a. So, this will be x c by k a okay. and if this is v ref and this is v, we will come to know the value of v, the value you need to give to v ref in order to get v at the terminals of the generator in steady state. Is that okay? Yeah. So, this is an important point. Remember that the steady state gain of this transfer function is k a. k a by 1 plus t a has, has a steady state trans, uh, gain of k a. Okay. Now, of course, there is something which was implicit uh, in what we did. Uh, the we have got delta, but what is the initial what is the initial angular speed of the rotor omega? In fact, it is equal to omega naught. Why is that so? Because if you said d delta by d t equal to zero is equal to omega minus omega naught. Suppose I set this to zero. After all, we are computing the equilibrium values. You'll get omega is equal to omega naught. Okay, so that's why we get it uh, as I mentioned. Now, uh, what we have done so far is actually compute. I've given you a procedure, a step-by-step -step procedure, to compute the initial uh, values of uh, delta, E f d, V ref, okay, and T m as well. T m in per unit is equal to electrical power in per unit provided the speed is equal to the base speed. Okay. The 
equilibrium speed is equal to the base speed. Okay. So, mechanical power and electrical power are equal okay, and mechanical torque in per unit at if the machine is operating at the base speed is equal to the, uh, uh, the both the torque and the power are equal okay, in per unit. Now, uh, we of course, uh, have made one assumption that the resistance of the generator is very small. Otherwise, of course, there is a bit of a loss and the electrical power output of the generator is not equal to the mechanical power. There is a bit of a loss. Okay. Now, of course, once you get uh, all the, you, you get E F D and you of course, uh, can obtain psi D and psi Q as well. In fact, uh, once you have got E F D uh, and you have got I Q, I D and so on, you can compute what psi D is going to be. Okay. From psi D, you can get the values of psi F and psi H as well. Okay. So, this is how you actually compute the equilibrium values of all the states okay, one by one. Okay. Of course, in the uh, Q axis, psi, if you are operating uh, at omega naught which is equal to the base speed, in that case psi Q will be equal to minus of V D. Okay. So, as a result, uh, you will get the value of psi q and from there you can get the values of psi g and psi k which are the other states in our state space description of the synchronous machine. Okay. We will quickly go through the linearization of the differential equations of a synchronous machine connected to an infinite bus via a line and with an AVR. Okay. So, the first uh, let us just talk of the first uh, you can say one of the differential equations is relating this uh, which really relates the rate of change of speed to the torques acting on the system. So, for example, d, d omega by d t d delta omega by d t okay, is proportional is proportional to delta t m minus delta t e and of course, you can linearize this using this equation. Okay. So, this is a linearized equation. Okay. Remember that the subscript O here, the subscript O which appears just after this here or here really denotes the equilibrium value of the states. Okay. The other uh, differential equation is linear to begin with. So, it just becomes the uh, linearization is very straightforward here. The rotor flux equations are in fact, if you just look at these equations by themselves, they are linear again. Okay. Remember that stator flux is no longer the psi d and psi q are no longer states. Okay. We shall see that they in fact obtained from the algebraic equations obtained by neglecting or setting d psi d by d t equal to 0 and d psi q by d t equal to 0. Of course, a 1 dash a 1 double dash b 2 dash are given by these equations and this is the algebraic equation which relates i d and i q to the stator and rotor fluxes where a 3 is given by this. The static excitation system model, we assume of course, that the exciter is not hit its limit. In that case, X c and E f d are identical and the different linearized differential equation is given by this. Remember that v is equal to root of v d square plus v q square which is a nonlinear function. So, when you have to when you linearize it, you will get delta v is equal to this. As before, as discussed in the previous lecture, psi d psi q, i d i q and v d by v q uh, can be obtained in terms these psi d psi q, i d i q, v d v q appear in the differential equations, but we can actually eliminate them and write them in terms of the states using the six algebraic equations which are linear equations. These are the six algebraic equations. The 
linearized form of delta e d and e q is given by these two equations. Remember that delta e uh, we assume that e is a constant. So, actually delta e is 0. Okay. So, we will just have delta e d is equal to minus e cos delta 0 into delta delta and minus uh, delta e q is equal to minus e into sin delta 0 into delta delta. Okay. So, finally, we obtain this set of differential equations. Remember that delta psi d, delta psi q, delta i d, delta i q and delta v d and delta v q do not appear here, because they have been written down in terms of state variables, which are delta delta, delta omega, delta psi f, delta psi h, delta psi g and delta psi k okay, and substituted in the differential equation. So, that we get it in pure state space form that is d delta x by d t is equal to a into delta x plus b into delta u. We can now use the a matrix which we obtain okay, finally, to do the eigenvalue analysis. S uh, the system small signal behavior is also a function of the equilibrium point. Okay. So, once you get the equilibrium point plug it into all your uh, linearized equations and you get a final state space form like this. Once you linearize it you get your eigenvalues. So, let me put what we are trying to do. We are trying to see how to linearize the a synchronous machine connected to uh, an infinite bus through a reactance, which is also having uh, the generator also having uh, automatic voltage regulator and the excitation system, which is modeled. Okay. So, what we are going to do is see if we can replicate or get a good uh, validation of the result simulation which result which we got in the previous class. That is for a certain operating condition it was found that the system does not settle at an equilibrium point. Is it actually seen by Eigen analysis as well? So, let us see whether that is true. So, what I need to do is of course, write a program to run this. Okay. So, I have done that. Remember this is what uh, we were trying to analyze we synchronize the synchronous machine. This is of course, the simulation result not the result of the Eigen analysis of course. This we synchronize the machine gave a step change in the electrical uh, the mechanical torque. Then we gave another step change to make it approximately 1 per unit and what we saw was this is the plot of course, of delta. We saw that for the second disturbance the system does not seem to be settling down, but seems to be increasing with time. Okay. It seems to be increasing with time and what we conjecture of course, is prob prob probably this equilibrium point is not small disturbance stable. So, we will just confirm this shortly. Okay. So, what we will do is I have written down a program of course, this time I will not show you the program. What I will do is I will uh, just run this program. So, what we have got is Gen A V R Ike. Okay. So, what we will do is we will just run this program first, and once you do that, oops, yeah, not SCI. What we will do is take out the eigenvalues. Okay. The eigenvalues are corresponding to which operating point? Well, I have uh, I am trying to take out the eigenvalues in this particular. Uh, uh, you know in this program for the operating point corresponding to uh, the electrical power equal to 0.5. Remember when I give a step change to the electrical power uh, the mechanical power to 0.5 the electrical power also will go to 0.5. This particular equilibrium point which corresponds to the first disturbance in our previous simulation is seems to be stable because you see that the oscillation seem to be settling down. Okay. It is only the subsequent disturbance which gives a step change in the torque to the tune of uh, 0.5, which uh, 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 such that the total mechanical torque becomes 1 per unit. It is then that the operating point is seen to be unstable. Okay. So, what we will do first is try to take out the eigenvalues of the linearized system around the operating point corresponding to T m is equal to 0.5. This is stable as per the simulation. 
Okay. So, we just take out the Eigen values and what we see here is all the real parts are negative. This confirms that uh, this is in fact a good there is a one to one uh, kind of uh, correlation between what we see in the simulation and in the Eigen value analysis. So, what we are really seeing is that the system even uh, the Eigen value analysis predicts that the equilibrium point corresponding to T m is equal to 0.5 is indeed stable. Okay. Now, if I make T m is equal to 1 per unit. Okay. So, remember that when I gave a step change of uh, in the simulation from 0.5 per unit to 1 per unit in the mechanical power, we first saw of course, the first step change which was from point 0, 0.0 to 0, 0.5 resulted in the new equilibrium point being stable. You saw this uh, equilibrium point was stable. The second step we saw that it was not stabilizing, it was growing with time. So, what we are now going to investigate is the nature of the eigenvalues around the operating cor point corresponding to T m is equal to 1 per unit. Okay? So, now we will do that. So, in my program I need to just change this operating point to say 1 and see what are the small signal characteristics of the system around this equilibrium point. So, I will just run the program again. Yeah. Well, now what you see is that the, this swing, this low frequency oscillation here which is has got the imaginary part of 10 radians per second plus or minus 10 radians per second its real part is positive. So, this is actually an unstable system. Okay. Of course, one uh, point we will notice is that the real part is 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02. So, actually uh, the growth of these oscillations for small uh, near about the equilibrium point will be E into 0 0.02 times T. What I mean is that your oscillations if you give a if you are near about the equilibrium point your oscillations will be growing at this rate okay you will find this this is exponentially growing like this okay now there are two things which you should notice about the simulation which do not seem to be consistent with this although the fact that this is unstable equilibrium point seems to be validated using the eigen value analysis there are a couple of things we have not considered that is if you look at the rate of rise of this oscillation, it seems to be much more than what is predicted by Eigen analysis. Eigen analysis predicts that E raised to 0 0.02 t, this is the rate of at which this growth should take place. Okay? Okay? Now, E is around 2.17 or so. Okay? So, at every 1 upon 0 0.02 seconds you will see that there is a there is an amplification of 2.7 over the value which was there 2.7 seconds back. So, if this is 2.7 uh, rather if this is 1 upon 0 0.02 seconds back you will see an amplification factor of 2.7. Okay? So, if t is equal to 1 upon 0 0.02 you will find that the amplification which has taken place in this interval 1 upon 0 0.02 seconds will be 2.7 times. Okay. So, what it says is that 1 upon 0 0.02 is nothing but 50. So, every 50 seconds there is an amplification you know it kind of there is an amplification which will occur which is 2.7 times. Okay. So, there is an amplification which is occurring which is 2.7 times of the value which is 50 seconds back. Okay. But what you see here in the simulation, if you look at the simulation result, the rate of rise is in fact much faster. Okay. The doubling for example, has taken place in less than 10 seconds. Okay. This is probably due to the fact that I have used Euler method in uh, simulating this system. So, uh, I think uh, from my side this is the last time I will try to use Euler method. It is giving uh, an instability much more than what is predicted by Eigen analysis. Okay? The rate of growth is much much faster, 
Eigen analysis predicts that uh, there is uh, almost tripling of the response or the disturbance every 50 seconds, but uh, here it is growing much much faster, it is doubling almost every 10 seconds. Okay. So, that is probably a result of Eigen analysis. There is one more point which with which we will conclude this lecture. You notice that uh, the oscillation is not just growing with time. What I had expected was linearized analysis predicts that the system is unstable. What does it mean? That the envelope of this oscillation should go on growing as I am showing you on this sheet. Okay? It should just go on blowing up, but what happens is actually the oscillation is uh, instead settling down. Now, is this due to the numerical method used or is there some other issue? Well, remember that once the oscillation increases in magnitude, our linearized analysis is no longer valid. Okay? So, what is likely uh, what, what is happening probably is that the nonlinear behavior is no longer what the linearized analysis would predict. Okay? So, rather the linearized analysis is not valid once the system blows up. Okay? So, that is one important point. So, what you see in the simulation is not exactly what you see in Eigen analysis except for the fact that the Eigen analysis correctly predicts that this equilibrium point is not stable, but the continuous blowing up is not actually occurring. Okay? Now, uh, why is this so? This is something this is an interesting and uh, small uh, remnant point which we will discuss in the next lecture. Okay? So, uh, from there onwards of course, we will now go on to the modeling of other components uh, in the power system. Uh, so, we will do that in the next class.